I'm super excited to uh, see you all here tonight. Uh, this, our virtual uh, mixer, we've got some great speakers here tonight. And uh, Susan and I were just talking today and we're talking about coming back to in-person uh, mixers and how excited we were about doing that. But, you know, there's going to be a little twang that uh, we're going to miss a lot of the education uh, that we received over the last 12 months with our guest speakers that have been on point uh, with the uh, information that we've needed to get us through the next few weeks, you know, reopening, sanitising uh, businesses. Are we closing down? How do we do this? What's an essential business? Um, how to survive during the time of a pandemic? So... Uh, you know, it's, there's going to be a little part of me because I know once we're all together, we're all going to go cray cray. We're going to be going straight for that wine. We're going straight for that beer. We're going straight for that food. We're going straight for those besties. It's like kids turn up at kindergarten first day out of uh, school holidays. I, that's what I see anyway. Or maybe that's just me and my how I think I might be. But thank you for joining us here tonight. And I'd like to thank uh, Chris Nelson, uh, our ambassador chair, and his merry group of ambassadors that uh, do this and can't wait to see you in person as well. So thank you, ambassadors, for all that you do. Uh, thank you to our board members that are online here tonight. Uh, they've had a crazy job. They want to start having a hybrid meeting, those that have been vaccinated, socially distanced, and meeting together. So, no, I think I'm on the right track that we're all wanting to get together and it's like going to be the first day after uh, summer vacation. I've got a couple of things exciting to talk to you about, but I'm going to first off start with something that's, you know, more on the serious side. Uh, we just sent our um, last round of invoicing out. We know that this has been a, a particularly hard year for some. Some it's been great, but some it's been a little hard. I don't want to leave anybody behind. We want everybody in on the boat just because this might be a little bit hard. I want you to give me a call and let's see if we can work some things. If you are uh, still wanting to remain a member, but you're just having a little tough, everything will be confidential. We'll work some stuff out, uh, but I don't want to leave. Uh, any business behind, especially now that we're going to be uh, putting on extra staff to be able to help train you free uh, in your e uh, improving your e-commerce and online presence. We want you connected so that you've you can come to the mixes, that you'll get our emails, you'll get our updates, you'll get the full support. We're going to be a staff of six now. Is that crazy? That's crazy. And you know, we did it. Uh, resourcefully with our premier members, our membership plus, um, our membership growing to 500. And also by being resourceful and knowing that uh, there were federal grants out there that we could, albeit eight months of hard work to get those funds, uh, it sounds very easy, but we were able to get some federal funds to be able to support our businesses. So that way we didn't have to increase our dues. So for all of those people, including the federal government, thank you for supporting Eureka Chamber of Commerce, our members, our staff and our community. Uh, and in saying that, I am particularly excited. We held our inaugural State of the Economy Address and there, I can tell you that there were, in the webcast, there were 84 participants. We had another 123 watching on Facebook Live. That is cool. Could you imagine if all those people were in a room? We'd be going, boom, what a crazy successful event. Now we've had another 500 views on top of that. That's full reviews, watching it all the real all the way through. So that was great information. I can tell you it was one of the driest presentations I ever have. Scott tried to make a few funnies in there, Scott Adair. Um, but other than that, all I wanted was fact, stuff that you could go have a look at where we are in the economy now, where there are potential for growth, where we've come out of and what the future looks like. So if you're wanting to have uh, 50 minutes of really dry facts, that is the webinar for you. And if you're looking at doing your financial plans and growing your investment, investing into it, dry information, facts. If you're that guy or that girl, that is the webinar for you. But then we're not stopping there. We launched, Sierra, I'm going to stop this because I want you 
uh, to maybe just talk about what we did this week and, and what uh, impact that's going to have. And I'll embrace and expand on that because why use one word when I can use 10? Hey everyone, I'm Sierra. Uh, we launched our inaugural uh, vodcast this week, which is like a podcast, uh, except it has video as well. We got some new equipment, we got microphones, a really nice camera. And um, so I was a reporter, a multimedia journalist in Humboldt when I first moved here for about four years. So I have a lot of experience and background interviewing people. So we've been adding all sorts of new things um, to the chamber as, as time has gone by. So we thought of this and we're really excited about it. We interviewed Chuck Petrusha from Advanced Security Systems as our first guest speaker. Uh, it was a 30 long or a 30 minute long interview, but it like flew by in five minutes because Chuck was just wonderful. Uh, but he provided a lot of beneficial information for business longevity. I mean, his family's business has been in business. They're celebrating their 50th year. And he's been in the industry for 41 years. So he talks about employee retention, you know, business strategies, uh, you know, starting up a business, the most important factors of running a successful business. Um, so you're really getting to hear, you know, from a local person about so many different um, things that affect local business. So he was just our first uh, participant, but we're going to, or the plan is to do this twice monthly and interview um, if anyone has any ideas for speakers or topics, or if anyone wants to volunteer, we're open for suggestions. Um, but the first one we really launched with a bang and it was really successful and we've got a lot of great feedback. So you can check it out on our YouTube and on our Facebook and on our IGTV, which is on Instagram. And we're super excited and we really want this to be a resource um, for local businesses. So we're happy and we really want you to check it out. I can't tell you how excited I am that we launched that. That was something that we were going to uh, launch as a podcast uh, prior to the pandemic to add that to video so that you can uh, put it on the audio. Uh, in about two or three weeks, we're going to, oh, sorry, in about a month, we're going to be able to put that onto Spotify or Apple so that this will be a podcast series or vodcast series and you'll be able to see that. But for right now, what I want you to do is engage uh, with that. Let's reach out to us if there's any relevant speakers. One of the other, the next speakers after um, we look at Nordic Aqua Farms, and that's a very important subject. Uh, we're going to talk about employment. None of us can find people to to hire. It's a real problem, and uh, we're failing at the chamber. And in saying that, we've got two job openings wonderful positions, uh, very much affordable, uh, above affordable living jobs uh, to assist you with your e-marketing and uh, online presence. And, uh, and you know, we haven't had uh, for those that quality of job and, and you know what, they're going to work with a great team, what's going on? But we're not the only ones. It's not just us, it's restaurants, it's um, grocery workers, it's professional, it's uh, education, it's, 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 it's across the board. So that's going to be a great conversation that we have there with our employment experts. Uh, there you go. That's it. I'm finished. I love seeing you. And this is Donna signing off from the sidelines. There was a joke when we were coming in. They said I look like a sportscaster today with my hat and my little whatever. So this is Donna signing off from the sidelines. <laughs> And I'll hand over now. Oh, my God. No, I won't. I'm going to hand over to the ambassadors. I'm going to uh, ask for Kara Clower, Davin and Chris to talk about some of the things that we're doing. So I am now officially signing off. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. So we have a couple of reminders for you tonight. I'm going to share my screen here. So uh, we have some visuals. So membership plus for an additional $95 a year, that's under $8 a month. You can expand your social media reach by leveraging the chamber and having them do the work for you. Uh, they have an average reach of 20 to 40,000 um, a month. 
<clears throat> and this includes business of the day promotions, families and faces behind the businesses, choose humble, new member spotlight, and the newest, uniquely Eureka. This is where the chamber is highlighting our unique local businesses here in Humboldt County. Um, and this is available for those who have membership plus and also our premier members. Um, and you will see here Michelle with Bev's Real Kids. She was our first one to uh, let us promote her. Um, and there are instructions of how you can participate, but first make sure you're a premier member or that you have membership plus. This information is on the website and social media platforms. That's it. Hi, I'm Dave and I'm gonna take over. And uh, you need to round up your team and start practicing your swing because you're invited to the 2021 Bear River Casinos Resorts Annual Charity Golf Tournament. The event will benefit the Eureka Greater Chamber of Commerce. Oh, said that funny. And cash prizes and trophies will be awarded to the top three teams. Uh, it's Friday, July 30th, 8 a.m. registration, 9.30 shotgun start. Fantastic, David, and I'll take over from here. Well, save the date, Sunday, September 12th, 2021. Sunday, fun day, a friend raiser. Food, fun, post-pandemic excitement to be held at Old Growth Cellars at 1945 Hill Ficker Lane in Eureka and there will be more information to come. Keep your eye on the Chamber newsletter website because it's going to be fantastic, exciting. And as we all come out of the pandemic, everybody's going to be looking forward to spending more time together. And if we get our usual September fantastic Sunday weather, it should be an incredible event. And with that, let's do a prize. Excellent. So our first prize is an amazing basket of spring treats. This is donated by our host. And thank you so much to Real Property Management Humboldt for hosting this mixer. It is Humboldt Bay Coffee, Dick Taylor Chocolates. We also have Real Property Management Humboldt logo goodies and a bottle of Casaro's Catering Green Onion Vinaigrette. And Chris, why don't you tell us who the winner is? The winner, according to the random number generator, is Angela Petrusha. Is Ooh. Angela on the call tonight? Congratulations, Angela. That's okay. I'll keep it. <laughs> well, if Angela's not here, I'll go ahead and I'll generate another number. Hold on. You know, there must be so she must someone must have died in the family for not Angela not to be on here. Susie Smith is Susie Smith present. She wins. There she is, right in the towards the middle of the screen. Congratulations, Susie. All right. And our next item is also donated by our host, Real Property Management Humboldt. It's an identical basket. So you're actually going to get five chances to win one of these baskets. And Chris, why don't you let us know who the random generator winner is of this one? The random generator winner is Bill Crassweller. Is Bill on the call tonight? Obviously a death in the family. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lucky too. He always wins. How about Marlene White? Is Marlene White on the call? Yes, I am. Thank Yay! you. I see you right there oh, next to there. Congratulations, Marlene. All right. okay. Thank you. Congratulations, Bernie. And remember, this is a great opportunity to get your business name out there by providing a gift to the chamber. You don't have to wait until the mixer. Just drop it off, you know, a few days, a week before the mixer. Donna would absolutely love to have more items. And again, we have another basket from Real Property Management Humboldt. And Chris, let us see who winner number three is. Winner number three is Xavier Ayala from Eureka Payments. And I know I saw Xavier's name earlier. I'm here. Hello. He's here. Congratulations, Xavier. Congratulations, Xavier. Thank you, Chris. All right, back to you, Chris. 
All right. Well, with that, let's turn it back over to Donna for our new members for this month. Take okay. it away. You know, I'm going to add something because if I've Go got ahead. space, you know, I'm going to add something. I want you all to think about this. We are hoping we've got our fingers crossed. We're paying to our gods uh, to have an all member chamber mixer at the Chamber of Commerce in July. Now think about that. That's going to be the first time we come together. Uh, now we're going to we're, we're going to to host that because you know we, that's our responsibility there. We don't want to leave that to you guys. But with all going well, you know we're putting it out there. If we can get together and invite our members to come in and have a table and to share what they have and have people come around and have a look and then meet the people. Um, that's going to be great. And we're looking at partnering with Redwood um, Arts Authority, which are just next door. So they'll have a virtual art exhibition as well. So, you know, we'll just be able to walk up there, come back in, come into site, but in our parking lot, having a table with representation for all of those members that uh, would like first in best dressed, I say. So let's pray to uh, our gods and and be able to, and all wear a mask, don't make us ask, get your vaccinations, practice best uh, safety so that we can all get together in July and help promote our businesses. So we've got some great new members this week, Plan West Partners. Uh, that's uh, um, a, a company up in Arcata. Our board member, Rob Holman, is now working there and he's invited them as part of the team and they're super excited to join us. Um, Humboldt Bay Company. Uh, you wouldn't have heard of this company. This is a company that is looking at uh, bringing in a cannabis development um, over in Samo Samoa. So you're going to hear more about that soon. Brindle and Fawn, I want to tell you a little bit about this. Kiela last night, most of you know that I'm a proud member of Seroptimist International Humboldt Bay, past president, very proud. And we had our um, awards dinner last night and Kiela was one of those um, uh, winners. Or And so I was very, very excited for her. I got to meet her, get to know her personally. She has a, um, a good food, locally made, organic, best for dogs, uh, dog biscuits. So I know that there's a couple of you here that are mad dog lovers like myself. I, they, she had like good favor because I had my three dogs as a judge and taster. So she won hands down. She's just an amazing, amazing woman. So keep your eye out that for that Brindle and Fawn. And then Humboldt Bay Social Club, OMG. Can I tell you, I've been working on them for a long time. I want to go out there. I want to um, have a lot more events um, out there. I want us to hold meetings out there. I want to start promoting them. They're doing great work out there. You know what? They finally, finally joined us and I could not be happier. And they're coming in as a premier member. That's pretty cool. Oh. That is pretty darn cool. So I'm going to hand over now to my friend, my boss, a man that I respect highly, Darius Tretner, from Real Property Management. Well, thank you, Donna. And hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Darius Tretner, and um, I am glad to have the opportunity to chat and to share. And I thought I would take a few minutes here before Greg gives us some updates to share some things with you. I wanted to talk about some of my aspirations, some of my appreciation, some data about Humboldt County in the time of COVID and then share some, some highs and lows of property management. So let's see if I can share a screen here. Is that coming up for you? Yes. Okay. So once again, I'm Darius Strutnam from Eureka. My mother had the Eureka so Cat so Clinic. All your... What's that? Oh, mic's on. And Donna, you're muted too. <laughs> okay, so I grew up in Eureka. My mother had the Eureka Cat Clinic. My father was a, a handyman. And um, so I'm from the area and uh, I decided to get into property management because I liked the idea of building a business that helped manage the community. And so I was thinking about that today and how much I appreciate all of you as chamber members and all the businesses and all the parties that manage themselves, manage their homes, manage their employees, 
it's such a wonderful thing that we all can do our part to build better communities together. So I just wanted to say thank you to, to everyone out there that's doing their part for good management. I've enjoyed the opportunity uh, with our team to, to contribute to Eureka and to Humboldt County. Um, this is that a few years ago, that uh, painting project out there. And I think that's a good example of, of another thing, of good management. Hey, just paint some utility boxes. The smallest things that we can do are good management for the community. Mr. Rogers is just my inspiration here. So when I talk about good management, it's about managing the relationships of our neighbors, of our employees, of our teams, of our cars, right? So I think of good management, I just thought, what a fun reminder that we all play a part in good management for our community. So for real property management, we've got a portfolio. This is just a, a piece of it in Humboldt County. I thought it might be interesting to share some data over the past year. So these are just little dots for properties in the area. And I'll share some data and what's been going on for the past year or so. Once again, this is just our portfolio. Um, that's primarily because um, rental properties aren't listed in the same way, like there's in a centralized MLS. So we can't say unequivocally, this is the data for all rentals. This is just for our portfolio. But one of the interesting uh, data points right here is a delinquency chart. This is a percentage, it might be too small. Is that is that legible, Donna, can you read those? Is that too small? I can see okay. it. So this is an interesting chart. This is March, 2020. I got off a plane, I just visited a friend in Idaho and then it was lockdown. And so I'm sure all of you can remember hearing about a lockdown and the changing world. At the time, we saw a lot of projections for massive increases to get up to maybe 20, 30, 40% delinquency. You'll see this is at the peak here at 1.8%. So there was an increase in the balance owed, but it actually was not nowhere close to what was projected. So at least for our portfolio for unpaid rent, DQ is unpaid rent, delinquent rent, the balances owed actually didn't uh, increase as much as was projected. So it was a silver lining that it appears um, the programs that were out there to assist with rentals did make a positive difference in people. And you can see we're trending back down in a good direction. So overall, it's a good sign that, that we've, we've come through and we're not done, of course, but um, it wasn't, uh, for many people, it wasn't as bad as, as it was expected. And this is an interesting one here. This is day by day. So if you can see, this is February and March, 2020. And this is the days of the month. So this is just interesting data that you can see that it was over here in the green for these uh, periods prior to COVID and then it got in the red and we're back, if you see up here in March, we're back in the yellow. So we're back in, uh, we're getting the right direction again. Pop quiz for non RPM people here. We see a spike in July and then it spikes back up. You see what month this is, it's January, 2020. Non-RPM people, someone call out, just what's a guess? Why would delinquency spike in January every year? Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> so it's just one of those little insights in the data that becomes apparent based off behavior. So anyway, so DQ overall um, delinquency was, was um, good to see and it's trending in the right direction. Um, we leased 340 properties, we had 340 move-ins in 2020 versus 395 in 2019. So you can see it went down, uh, but not as dramatically as someone would expect. We actually kept the leasing process going pretty well, even in 2020. And then in 2021, year to date, we've had 92. So we're trending back up to nearly the, the same rate as pre-COVID. And this is the most recent months, months for the average days vacant. So we work really hard to minimize vacancy days and we've kept those pretty low this entire period. So it's an interesting data point. Median rent, it's pretty stable in uh, 2020. We're probably gonna see some increases in 2021. Zipping by, I wanted to wrap up here, just share a little highlight of what we do and some highs and lows. So what do we do with real property management? Maintenance. We don't actually have a tool that large for homes, but we try. Move-in coordinator. So our company 
has an important duty to act as an ambassador, in a sense, for the county. So a lot of people that are moving into the area, we may be one of the first companies they talk to. So it's an important role to help introduce the community and give that friendly welcome experience. Then we get to debt collecting, rent, debt, but it's part of the job. And ultimately we're there to help people stay on top of their bills. Document organizer, unreal. The volume of paperwork and interactions and communications that we have to document, but do our best to keep track of it. Compliance enforcer. So we're there to make sure the rental agreement is followed. And then of course, when there's problems, we're there to do our best to try to assist them. So there's a lot of counseling involved. We do our best. And then of course, you're not really a property manager until you've been sued. So lawsuits are the name of the game. Now unlawful detainers or evictions are lawsuits, but we get sued in small claims. It's We do our best to treat everyone fairly, but that's an important understanding that you will be sued. And there's some of them are legitimate, some are not, but either way, we want to protect our clients as best we can. So that's a low, but then of course the highs are helping people move and helping people create homes together. This was a fun one where um, a couple moved into their home and he had set up a picture and he proposed uh, as soon as they move in and got the keys and then sent us a, a, a photo and thanked us for helping them move and for creating the new home and their new life together. So new, new tenant celebrations is definitely a high of, of the business, helping people out. So that's it. Real property management with property managers. We're proud of an exceptional team of empowered leaders that provide trust, reliability, relationships, knowledge, freedom, growth, security, jobs, charity, improved neighborhoods, a better quality of life, peace of mind, and unique experiences as best we can, all, all cleverly disguised as a property management company. So Thank you, Chamber members, for all you do for good management for your companies, for yourselves, and for the community. I appreciate it. And let's keep rocking. Darius, I love that. And but I would like to hear because I I am privy to sitting in uh, twelve hour meetings a day, and there was a conversation that I was privy to, and I'd like you just to share a, a project that you're uh, working on right now, uh, which is a, a rent to to buy program, and I'm saying that very loosely. You probably have a much better, um, and or you already have a title for that, but could you maybe share something that uh, you're looking or you're working on at the moment, if you still are? Please yeah, yeah. pull me back if, if you're not. No, that's great. And and um, what Donna is referring to is, is one of the programs that we're, we're developing and planning on rolling out shortly. Uh, it's a credit building program. So it's not directly to help renters to by homes, but what it is is for the first time, renters will be having their rent payments reported to all three credit agencies. Ah. So as their largest, typically one of their largest uh, uh, expenses, uh, for most tenants, it does not provide any benefit to their rent, I mean, to their credit. So when you buy a car, when you buy a home, you're getting benefits to your credit but we have a large population that's getting no benefit uh, for their responsible payment of rent. And so we're really excited to provide this as um, um, a value to all the residents in our portfolio for this credit building program. And we should be, you know, next month is our target to start rolling it out to, to new tenants and then have it roll out to all existing tenants. And I'm really excited to, to see the benefit to their credit because that's over it's over 2,000 individuals in Humboldt County that will start having their credit immediately improved. And uh, we should be able to backdate it up to two years. So it's, it's going to be a substantial uh, benefit to tenants. And I think that should be the standard for, for all tenants, all residents in homes. They're, they're getting value for They're getting value for the home they live in, of course, but getting uh, value to the credit as well. Could I just ask, Darius, is that just your organization or are you advocating on behalf of all tenants? It's only going to be something we can offer to people in our mm -hmm. properties that we manage. It has to be uh, under our management. 
The reason is that the credit agencies are reluctant to allow just anybody. Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> so they, the credit agencies <laughs> are very careful about who they allow to report data uh, to the bureaus. And so uh, we can't provide that to people that aren't under our management because we don't know if they paid or not. Uh, yeah. we, we know for our portfolio, but we don't know for anyone else. I really appreciate you taking that initiative. As, as most of you know, I'm a past uh, lender myself. And uh, I just, I love your initiative and your drive and always looking at new opportunities. And that's something that's, and I've watched your career now for what, 10 years, Darius? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really have loved watching you evolve um, into the businessman you are today. But if anybody has any questions... Thank you, Don. Oh. Well, thank you, everyone. I uh, thank you, Donna. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you, Susan, for all the work you're doing as well. I think you guys are doing a great job of managing the chamber. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we're going to hand it over now to Chris and Carol. Carol, let's do a prize. All right. Sounds great. So this is another basket from Property Guys for Host. Very informative information. Thank you so much. Um, it is one of your wonderful baskets. And Chris is going to tell us who wins the Humble Bay Coffee, Dick Taylor Chocolates, Logo Goodies, and a bottle of Casaro's Green Onion Vinaigrette. Sheila Bearden, are you here? Are you present? Ah! <laughs> I'm here. I'll donate it back. Or oh, thank you oh, very, very much. All right. And we will do the fifth basket from Real Property Management Humble. Again, it's an identical basket. So let's see who wins this goodie. Chris, who is that the would random person? Bird Lochte. Is Bird Lochte on the call? I think I yes, saw her. Yes, she is. I saw her. Congratulations, Where's Bird. Where's Bird? I love Bird. If anybody All doesn't right. know Bird, check out. She is just one great woman. Thank you. And our next item is donated by Redwood Capital Bank. Again, Redwood Capital almost always donates and we truly appreciate it. This is a country decorating basket that includes, as you can see, a pillow, a throw, a wonderful candle and a flask. And Chris, who is our lucky winner? Our lucky winner is Stephanie Lane. Is Stephanie present? Yeah. I saw Stephanie. I am, thank you so much, that's great. Yeah, I know you'd be all over that, Stephanie. <laughs> Congratulations. And we'll do one more in this series. This is donated by Premier Financial. And this is also a basket featuring books, wine, sweet treats, and scented soaps. Very cozy basket. Chris, who's our winner? Becky and Jerry Reese. Congratulations, you guys. <laughs> I just Ember also ambassadors. Thank you, Carol. You know, Carol's been ambassador with us for like 5 million years and she's just a joy. Um, I wa just want to give a shout out to Casaro's Catering. If uh, you haven't tried their salad dressing, they called it, she called in today with that salad dressing. She gave an extra one to our staff. So of course I'm going to give her a shout out. I love that dressing. And she just put those in the basket. So if you have not had Casaro's Catering, salad dressing or used to do yourself a favor now if i may i would like to call on our guest speaker this gentleman is very shy so i want you to be gentle with him he doesn't talk very much and he has, <clears throat> has very little to say and he's 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 just like honing up his skills so he's going to talk to us about flying planes and such and, uh, and what we can do if people land here in Humboldt County. So let's just give a very warm applause to Greg Foster. Don't scare him. He's very shy. <laughs> and we'll just hand it over to Greg. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I am, uh, yeah, I, I am verbose and I am loud. Um, but I think... What I will have for you tonight is of, of sufficient interest and quality that you will be enraptured. And this may be the uh, best uh, aviation presentation you'll hear this evening. Um, but I am executive director also of the uh, Redwood Region Economic Development Commission. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about Fly Humboldt, but just 
really quick, uh, REDEC is primarily a small business lender. Um, and we lend to a lot of small businesses in uh, Eureka. And of course, beyond that, we have about eight, almost $9 million in loans out right now uh, to a number of small businesses. We're a niche lender. Um, we often leverage uh, our loans with, uh, with other uh, public lenders or with the banks. A couple of the ones we've done just most recently, they were very excited about. We, um, we helped Dick Taylor uh, and with that, uh, with a, 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 a loan of a million dollars, which is part of their project for that beautiful facility they're gonna be building in, in Old Town. And we also, and you talked about earlier about the Humboldt Bay Social Club, well, the owners of that bought the Scotia Inn and we financed the purchase of that. So we're very excited by uh, what we're seeing uh, out there in terms of, of activity and lending. And it's, and it's a lot of growth oriented uh, uh, lending, which is very exciting. Um, we are, we, and the, our loan program really is the source of our revenue. Um, we don't get any public support or tax revenue or anything else like that. So we manage our portfolio like any other small business um, and, and make sure that that loan uh, portfolio throws it up enough revenue so we can support ourselves and do some fun projects. And one of those fun projects that we do is Fly Humboldt. And we started doing this back uh, in 2003, I'm actually now considered one of the old timers in the field of air service development, which has only been around about 22, 23 years. Most of the people I started with are now retired, um, but we're still doing it and we're having a lot of fun. So we've had a good year this year so far, and um, that comes off a bad year last year. I'm going to share the screen now, and um, here's our first of uh, 200 slides. Does everyone see that okay? Good. Um, and um, so, um, you know, 2020 obviously was a tough year. So let's look back to 2019 and what we do. So um, ACV, uh, which is our airport code, uh, we looked at 2019, which was a big year. Um, we had added uh, LA in 2018. And then in June 2019, we added uh, Denver service. Um, and so we had 81,576 passengers that passed through the airport. Uh, in 2019. Of course, um, that's in one direction. So they go both ways, right? So a lot of those people will hit the airport twice. Uh, so if you look at, you know, total number of people passing through the airport, getting on and on air, off, on and off aircraft, you're a little over 160,000. Um, out of that, and I'm I kind of have a tourist bent tonight to this presentation, out of that, about 42, 43% are what we consider visitors. Those are people whose zip codes on their tickets are not in our market area, which of course is about 90% Humboldt County. Um, and that visitor number increases both as, a, as an actual number and a percentage in the summer to about 50%. So about, you can say about half of the people moving through the airport uh, in the summer are people with zip codes that aren't from here. Now, are they all tourists? No, um, they could be students who have a home address still out of the area. Those all sorts of different reasons. But what I'm saying is, is that this is a significant gateway to our community um, through the airport and has a lot of uh, you know, business at, uh, support, um, but we also you know, bring in the leisure traveler from out of the area. And that's important because I'm gonna talk a little bit later about uh, where we're seeing the change in our new services um, and some of the language and some of the emphasis that they've had with us. And we're very encouraged by it. So let's look at 2020. How did the 2020 go? It was, it sucked. <laughs> um, and so we won't go over the numbers, except I'll give you two numbers. In uh, February, we had about 6,900 passenger employments. That's people getting on the plane in February. Um, uh, of course, you can almost double that with people getting off. Um, and uh, that was a 52% increase from the year before. By April, we had a little under 300, which was a 97% decrease from the year before. And so uh, uh, the whole industry by, by uh, March and April, of course, was in free fall. Um, and, and actually nationwide, the, the drop was 95 to 97% by April. So we're just going to skip over 2020, right? Let's just do that. Say, thank you very much. That's, we, there's no reason to study it. So um, what are we doing uh, going forward? Well, um, we've had some announcements and um, we're going to get one tonight. In fact, oh no, shoot, that doesn't look as good on 
the shared screens that did on my presentation. But anyway, um, so Denver is going to start up again on June 3rd. Uh, we'll make that official announcement. Um, and we knew this because <laughs> we've been working with the ops people and, and planning for that. But uh, network people have allowed us to start talking about it. And we're going to do a media release on that very soon. Um, so Denver will start on June 3rd. And by the way, Denver announced today direct flights to France starting up. When I, I talked to my friend who does air service development for the Denver airport, and I said, oh, we're really excited. And she goes, look what we're announcing today. And I was like, damn, that's awesome. So she's very excited about that. Um, and then we'll have Los Angeles and San Francisco. San Francisco is going to ramp up uh, by July to three a day. It's, it's it, one now, it's going to ramp up to two and then three by July. So, um, and then we have uh, American Airlines, and you've heard that they will be starting Phoenix service, um, and that will start also on June 3rd. So that's going to be a big day. We're going to have the first Phoenix and the first restart of Denver, um, and we'll see what we can do in terms of uh, celebrating that and having a party. And then our most recent, which we announced last week, uh, an airline we've been working with for quite a while. This is a new startup airline. It was started by the same guy who co-founded Allegiant Airlines. He left Allegiant to become the chief financial officer of United and then left United to buy a company called Extra, which he's then turned into a um, scheduled service airline. And that airline is actually just starting. So they'll be flying at 737 into our airport starting uh, four times a week, starting on May 19th. Now, I want you to think about something. We used to fly eight Embraer EMB-120 aircraft out of here. Remember those turboprops that we had until 2015? Each of those carried 30 seats. If we had eight departures a day, that was 240 seats. One Avalo plane will have 189 seats. So think about the volume. And we're going to talk about volume in just a minute. Those other aircraft mostly will be 70-seaters. So we are going to have an incredible increase in capacity. In fact, that's what it's going to look like. So these are the number of seats in the market in one direction, right? So uh, those planes come in, they go back out. So, you know, total number of seats, uh, you know, you got half of them coming in, half of them coming out. So we will have, uh, by uh, August, 16,000 departing seats in a month. That is, and of course, they, they come in. So we'll have 16,000 people coming in. Um, that's seats. So, of course, not all of them are filled, and the airlines are, you know, tiptoeing back into service. So we'll have uh, fewer people than number of seats. But you can look at back here in the summer of 2015, we had less than 6,000. So that's what we're dealing with. And our, my friend Cody, who runs the airport, is really scrambling, trying to figure out how to accommodate all the cars, all the planes, and all the people. And quite honestly, we're going to be to the point where our facilities really are going to be too small, actually. And so we're actually discussing if we can land these and keep these, and then we're looking at uh, maybe another service, um, we're, we're going to have to start investing in our facility up there to make more room. So where, where are these people coming from? So you can see LAX and Burbank here, the blue and the gray, that's uh, United, that, I mean Burbank, the blue is Avalo, United here, and then we have Phoenix, or excuse me, Denver, then Phoenix, and then San Francisco. So if you are a tourist business and you want to get people to fly here, you better be spending your money in the LA market because that's where they're coming from. 44% of the, of the seats will be coming from the LA market. Um, and we figure that most people who are tourists or leisure travelers are driving from the greater Bay Area, but they're probably, uh, most of the leisure travelers are flying, um, you know, the, most of our traffic will be coming from there, the leisure traffic. Um, and so this is just the percentage. So we'll have 44% of the seats coming from LA and Burbank. 30% for San Francisco, a lot of that will be connecting traffic and probably a lot, most of it will be connecting traffic, um, at least on the leisure side. Um, and then uh, Phoenix and Denver will be another 14% uh, each, both flying 70 seat aircraft on the same schedule. So obviously the number of seats are the same. So we're gonna have a lot of sedu. Who, who can guess what sedu means, anybody? Seats per day each way 
<laughs> that is, it, there's a lot of a uh, lot of acronyms in this field. We can talk about chasms and rasms and ASMs and and PDU and SADU and all sorts of fun stuff. But what that means is how many seats are going each way each day out of our airport. And we would expect in early times, pre-COVID, that you know anywhere from 80 to 90% of those seats would be filled. So right now, that means in June to September, we'll have 481 people or 481 seats each way every day on average. That's potentially about 400 people coming in and 400 people going out every single day on average. But Avalo is only flying four days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday, excuse me, when they fly, we'll have 539 people going through the airport or 539 seats. Again, maybe 450 people each way. That's 900 people moving through that facility every day on those busy days. That's the kind of volume we're talking about right now. And why that's important and what that means, I'll talk about in a couple more slides. So are we ready? Are we ready to handle these people? I'm going to say, here are the summary of opportunities, or I would also say, here's what's needed, because we are not ready at all. Um, we don't have a welcome center at the airport, but we are trying to get one uh, going, and, and we're working with some of the tourism groups and to fund a brochure rack and, a, and, a, and, a, and some other uh, things to welcome folks in there. Uh, we don't have any in-terminal displays or advertising, and we're working on trying to get that up and running. Um, and, and so we can sell advertising and, and uh, for folks in the airport. There are no current beverage or food and beverage services in the airport because Ramones is closed. Uh, the restaurant, which well, there's no county supervisors on this call, the county board, uh, I think in 2016, decided to fast track the uh, rebuilding of the restaurant. Um, and still haven't done a darn thing. <laughs> oh, we have no food or beverage service in the airport. Again, 400, 900 people potentially, not, not to mention you know, family members and everything else in the airport um, every day. Um, our ground transportation, we're down to one uh, car rental place because Hertz went out of business. I understand the airporter is for sale. Um, so we really don't have any ground uh, transportation, um, and then our we don't have a you know we have a very small taxi service, Uber and Lyft. Uh, I think that's the opportunity probably right now because um, they're going to be very busy going forward. Um, and the airport facility is is the, the terminal looks nice I think, but the grounds are in very poor shape. The um, county did put some money aside a few years ago to. Um, to fix up the grounds and do some work, but then they didn't spend any of it. And so nothing's happened. So uh, that terminal, I, I suggest you go up. And I'm not saying this is a criticism to the airport manager. Uh, he's doing an amazing job, quite honestly, Cody Ruggets. Um, It's really the um, tail end of years of, of neglect, quite honestly, <laughs> and mismanagement to be completely frank. And, um, and what happens in the airline business is you have to be ready for opportunity and you need to turn on a dime. I work with airports all over the country um, and, uh, and you have to be, you know, they're all building ahead of getting the service. That's the way you do it. It's not the other way around. Um, and, and what happens is we typically will work with an airline for a number of years uh, developing a service and then they'll call and say, great, we're going to start in four weeks or we're going to start in, if you're lucky, three months. So you need to be ready and you need to be, have an airport that can to respond quickly. Cody has been working tremendously hard. They're restriping, they're working with TSA, they're getting everything ready that they can um, to meet uh, this new service that's going to start um, in just about a month. Dropping as many people potentially in one, uh, one aircraft that we used to do all day back in the old days. So that's a challenge ahead of us right now. Um, so I, in right now we're in unprecedented times. We have never had as many as 16,000 seats coming in out of this airport ever. Even back when we were running uh, uh, United, Delta and Alaska back in 08 and 09. Um, so unprecedented, uh, unprecedented times, oh, I left out a word, require <laughs> new approaches. And I think 
this is my personal, not my agency. Uh, I think it's time that we really serious talk, seriously talk about an airport authority. And that means forming a JPA with a board of directors and a bureaucracy and a management scheme that's focused solely on the airport. Right now, the airport uh, department is just one department of the county. And so it is on par with everybody else. And so, but airports are businesses. Um, there are entire conferences and trainings and degrees in business management for airports. And so we really need to start bringing ourselves into the 21st century in our airport management and create something like an airport authority to allow folks to move forward. Now, Chris is on the, uh, Chris is very much involved in this. Are you on the Aviation Advisory Committee? I can't remember. Yes, I'm <laughs> District 4 for Downtown Eureka. Yeah, so Chris is on the Aviation Advisory Committee for the county, and he's heard this before. But this is going to be require a real community push to get happening. And I'll tell you how this affects it. How does the county being part of the county affect and, and not being an authority? So the county has an audit that's due every year, right? And uh, so we just finished the 2019 audit that ended June 30, 2019. And now they're working on the 2020 audit. And the airport, you read in the paper, was awarded $17 million to um, spend on airport improvements and operations. That was a result of the CARES Act back in April or May. The county can't touch that money until the 2020 audit is done. So... Is that the airport's fault? No, of course not. The airport is just one department. It could be something else going on in another part of the county. That's why we need a separate airport authority because when the count, the, the airport, and I'm not, this is not a critical of the county, quite honestly. It's just that the structure doesn't work anymore with the way airports run. Um, so anyway, that's my, that's my uh, you know, cheering on about that. But we have an amazing summer coming up. Um, we got to have a ton of people coming through. Um, we've never had service like this before. Um, and we're not stopping. We want more. So we have a meeting on May 10th. And again, uh, a meeting in Orlando on June 24th with, um, we're targeting Alaska airlines and we want to go to Seattle. Um, why are we, why are we doing that? Well, we've always been targeting them. I've been talking to Alaska airlines every about three times a year since they've left Humboldt County in 2010, 11. Oh, wow. um, but, um, but they are adding Seattle service to Reading Airport. Um, and so Reading announced that a few weeks ago. Uh, and uh, of course, I immediately got on the horn with our airline consultant and Cody at the airport and uh, my contact at, at Alaska Airlines and said, what the heck? You know, we got way more passengers than we do. They do. We do on order of twice as many uh, passengers as Reading does. So, um, and we still lose a lot of passengers out of the area. Um, so we have a big marketing study we just completed. Uh, we're putting together our presentations. We have a Zoom meeting ugh, on May 10th with them and then meeting in person again, knock wood in Orlando, Florida on June 24th. That's what the aircraft are going to look like that we're going to have. This is a American Eagle CRJ 700 that's got 70 seats. There is a uh, United Airlines uh, CRJ 700, or that's a 500 there, but uh, that's a 50 seat jet. Um, and then there's a United Airlines EMB 175, that's a 70 or 76 seat jet. These three jets are all operated by SkyWest Airlines, so you often hear SkyWest. Um, they contract to the majors to fly the aircraft in and out of here. And this is the Avalo jet. That's a 737. Um, and that will, uh, again, have the 189 seats. It's a low cost carrier. As you see, their introductory fares are $19 each way. But it's one of those ones, if you want a bottle of water, you're going to pay extra. If you want to take on your suitcase or have oxygen or whatever, you got to pay extra. So that's not true. The oxygen is free per federal law. Um, uh, but, it, you know, we're going to have a lot of aircraft up, up there and uh, it's going to be an exciting summer. Um, it fly, you know, what we do here at Fly Humble is our job is to recruit. That's that's basically what we do. Um, and and then schmooze and retain the airlines when we're here. It's really up to the community and the county of Humboldt to do the rest. Um, and that includes marketing. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll see some marketing because uh, we have such a great opportunity, some marketing happening soon in the, in the, in the Burbank, LA area.
because we have a you can get to Humboldt County in an hour and a half now from Burbank. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Greg, thank you so much. And uh, um, one of the things, and Greg and I are on meetings multiple times a week, and, you know, I've got a little bit of a bee in my bonnet right now that I'm absolutely concerned being an avid traveller myself, and I have booked two of those flights, one to Phoenix and one to Burbank already uh, for later in the year. But one of the things that I'm concerned at, when I go to anywhere in the world, I walk out of our, the airport, I look for a vehicle to get into, and I want them to take them to my hotel, and I want information that I can pick up along the way. We don't have any of that right now. So if I could reach you, our community, to think of options, whether it's to um, have uh, extra hire cars, to petition for that, whether that's um, local vehicles through uh, private companies like Turo, which is the car rental like Airbnb, uh, become an Uber driver yourself. I think we really need, am I speaking out of turn here, Greg? Like I'm thinking about putting, uh, no, I know. And this is where, you know, I need to have assertive training this as well. I think we all need to do our bit right now because this is going to reflect on our hotels. It's not going to reflect on the airport. It's going to reflect on those people that have that hospitality business, our restaurants. People are going to be peeved if they can't get a taxi or um, transportation. They don't realise how far uh, apart we are and that we don't have um, public uh, uh, transport here in the way that they're used to when they're coming from Bamboo. Um, Burbank, San Francisco, Phoenix. These people are used to Uber. They're used to everything on their phone and at their fingertips. We don't have that here. So if we can leave that best first impression and to be able to have this continual uh, injection of funds from uh, tourists to our community and business people, I ask you to uh, reach out to Greg and reach out to the city of Eureka, reach out to the county, reach out to everybody and say, now is the time. We can't waste. We, we've just got to make these things happen. How many, how many hire cars do we have? How many taxis, Greg? We can probably get, if there's 180 people on that flight, we can probably get 10 of them. The rest of them's going to have a wonderful experience at the airport. Sorry, I'll get back down off my soapbox. <laughs> no, we need to we need to push hard on this. And, uh, you know, I've been doing I, I was a former chair of the Humboldt Aviation Advisory Committee many, many moons ago. Um, and, um, you know, we we've been talking for quite a long time about the need to to really invest and develop in our facilities, not only the main airport, but the other ones. But the main airport right now is 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 critical. Um, and and, you know, this is a this is not a bad problem to have, but it's still a problem. And um and, you know, Valaire uh, uh, did this big management study that was uh, completed three years ago. Um, and I don't know that much in that strategy has been implemented, although they did create the department and, and created an airport director position. And again, I think Cody's doing a great job. Uh, he, he is, he's at the tail end of decades of neglect. Uh, at the same time, he's got a tiger by the tail now because he's got all these aircraft coming in. So um uh it's uh it's it's a real challenge and it's one that we actually have to step up and meet because if those customers are disappointed they don't necessarily call the airport they call the airline and i tell you what when the airline starts hearing complaints we hear about them here and we are competing with probably 400 other airports for this kind of service we are kicking it right now and there's a lot of jealousy out there and there's going to be a lot of airports throwing a lot of money to get that service away from us and um, it's a very competitive environment. Um, Greg, we have um, a question. And I was going to say, I love flying out of Arcata too. I've flown out of a lot of airports and this is a fantastic one. Um, okay, there was a question. Will TSA checkpoint be expanded? Well, um, they, they will uh, expand hours and more people. There is actually room there for a second screening line. Um, but, you know, TSA probably moves as quickly as, as any government agency. <laughs> so we'll see if they actually put in that second line. But they, you know, 
during those times that we have a lot of flights bunched up, um, you know, we used to say, oh, show up 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time, but you'll have plenty of time. Now we're saying you got to show up longer than that because those lines are going to be long to get through that checkpoint. Okay. Um, there was no other questions in the chat. I don't see any hand waves here. Oh, Chris, what's your question? Hey, Greg. I'm hey, going to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's not actually going to be a terrible spot. But Good. I just wanted to say that in regard to, uh, I thought maybe you could elaborate a little bit on the significance of the way that Americans coming in, because oh. for many, many years, we had to basically pursue the airlines and things have changed a little bit. Can you elaborate on that for everybody? I think it's very important. Sure. We've been presenting the American for years um, and and did presentations. We did and provide, what we had to do is we present to the airlines and provide business plan pro formas for each of these routes. And we hire a consultant to do that. He and I and, and Cody or, uh, you know, whomever will do the presentation. Um, and um, but what's interesting about both um, the Phoenix service with American, which, you know, uh, uh, is great and, and Avalo is typically we've always been a, a supplier of passengers, right? In other words, they just wanted us to be the origin so we, they could take passengers into the other, uh, other destinations. Both Avalo and Phoenix uh, and American, when they, when they uh, approached us and started talking about it and are pu publicizing, they are saying the Humboldt Redwood Coast is the destination. So if you go to Avalo Air's website, you will see fly to our beautiful destinations in Humboldt, Eureka and Humboldt County is one of them. So, um, and then if, and the American, uh, when we were doing the marketing and the media release for that, they specifically mentioned that they wanted to bring people to the Redwoods and Redwood National Park from the Southwest. That's a real change from where we're going. And there was an article the other day talking about point to point flying um, coming back um, at post COVID with uh, with United, and so usually it was all hub and spoke, right? Little airport to big airport out to across their network. Now they're doing city pairs more, so we're seeing that Phoenix to Phoenix to to Eureka or you know Humboldt County, uh, Burbank to here. That's a real change than what we've seen uh, in the past. It's a good change, um, and it's a, and it means we'll get some more marketing help. Um, uh, to get people coming here um, on those on those airlines. Okay, um, <clears throat> Greg, another question. Um, so with Ramones closed and the um, restaurant upstairs closed, is the airport accepting proposals for new businesses, or is the door opening? Is the airport opening the door and promoting for any kind of other beverage food businesses? They definitely are. And uh, there's no process in place right now. And again, here's the problem, right? When we talk about the need for authority, uh, you know, Cody, if he was his own department or an old authority, he would just move forward. But he has to go through the county processes now. And those, those can be slow, again, because the county has to manage everything from Department of Social Services to the DA to everything else, right? Um, and so you get kind of, you know, you, you're in the priority with everyone else. And that's, you know, again, we're not blaming anyone for that. It's just the nature of the beast. And, and that's, we got to just get rid of the beast. Um, the, the public works department did not really move on anything with the restaurant upstairs. So it's pretty torn up and um, it's going to need a lot of work before it gets opened. Um, that's unfortunate because the money was allocated five or six years ago to do that. It just hasn't happened yet. That um, is they have great food up yeah. Ramones is deciding about whether or not to reopen. So, um, so that's the balls in their court at this point. Okay. Um, but we do have great vending machines <laughs> with Humboldt Bay coffee. I know. Um, I, I'm looking, does anybody else have a question? We're just so excited about the airline. Like I said, I love flying out of here and do it as much as I can. Okay. Let's see. Is there, um, is the airport getting any revenue for advertising at the airport? No. The uh, county released an RFP a number of years ago um, that got no responses and has not moved forward to figure that out, deal with it since. Um, we are talking about uh, maybe having 
our agency, Redex, since the county is a member of our JPA, manage the advertising up there, and then we would we would get it out and going. But right now, uh, there is no advertising revenue uh, at the airport. Because I was a cap. Sorry about the cap. Which is unfortunate because there could there should have been a lot of revenue coming through. Maybe not so much in 2020, uh, but but prior prior to that. Um, did you? Well, Chris has a question, and then I'll ask mine. Okay, Chris, go ahead. One thing too, Greg, in regard to the situation with the advertising, one thing I wanted to point out, um, I'm going to toot Coast Central's horn a little bit. But we have stepped up and Coast Central recently purchased four large monitors that will be put together over the baggage claim. As a result, the existing monitor that is at the baggage claim will be moved more than likely to take over for the as the monitor for the advertising and brochure rack. So, <laughs> and that monitor, the, the monitor that's there now belongs to Redeck and we bought it at Costco uh, so we could get something up to launch, uh, to have a screen there when Denver came in. <laughs> and I was flying back from Nashville from an airline conference and called called my, uh, Shirley, the, my office manager here and said, go, go buy a monitor. I'm gonna make a video <laughs> in the airport and we'll stick it on there. But I, I only brought that up because I'm hopeful that other agencies and other you know, public private partnerships, people can step up if they're able to. And it's tough coming out of this pandemic, but this is a huge opportunity and it has to start somewhere. And I just hopeful that uh, we are on the right track. And Donna brought up some very important points and she's raised her hand. Go ahead, Donna. Uh, um, no, I didn't want to interrupt, oh. but I'm just wondering, um, uh, where's the city of Eureka? Uh, on this, have they uh, got, because we want to bring as many businesses as we can or many clients as we can into our area to fill our restaurants, to go to our zoo, to uh, go, stay in our hotels. Uh, what promotion are they doing um, to be able to to drive business here to Eureka and not to stay in McKinleyville, Arcata or just heads directly, worst scenario, directly just up to the Redwoods and see you later? I, I don't know. <laughs> my, my job is to bring bring the airlines here. Um, have, have you have they reached? Have you heard? Is there something in the pipeline? Because you know, otherwise I'll I'll be uh, reaching out to to them tomorrow. I'll leave that and I'll leave that ball in your court. All right. I, I have talked to Eddie Alexander, and they are you know they're they're really gearing up to do, um, and they're great folks, and they're really getting to gear up to do the uh, the. Skywalk and other things for the city of Eureka. So, um, and I'm sure that, you know, here's the, here's the problem that we have, of course, is the airlines, when we are in conversations with them, they hold us absolutely um, under the thumb in terms of confidentiality. And so we can't announce until they basically load their schedule and announce. Um, and so that's why we need mechanisms and, 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 and a quite honestly, a structure in place that allows us to react quickly um, because it's, a, again, it's a very competitive industry, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're really dealing with a handful of, of airlines and they don't want anybody else to know what they're doing um, until they load it into the public schedule. And so you will see that, you know, we, we've been, we'll be sitting on a, a flight announcement for, for months, right? Uh, because we're, we're, you know, we were touring with these people and taking them through the terminal and everything else, but we couldn't say a word until they say, okay, you can announce now. I, I agree. Uh, you know, this is, has come on as very quickly and I appreciate that, but, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about our member businesses. I want those people supporting our local businesses here in Eureka. So, yep. um, yeah, I'll just reach out to them tomorrow. Thanks right. for that, Greg. Um, Jerry has a question. Yeah, as someone who's also flown a lot, um, in addition to restaurants, what about adult beverages at the airport? I'm all for it. Um, I, I usually go out to the parking lot myself. Um, there's actually a full bar license for that uh, restaurant upstairs that goes with the uh, with the facility. Um, and I used to, you know, I used to nip a few at the old uh, silver lining back in the day. And again, we should have had this thing done by now. So yeah. that when the service increased, we we would be ready for it. And unfortunately, years and years have passed without any work being done on that restaurant space. 
Um, somebody asked a question about possibly having food trucks at the airport if we don't have restaurants. Yeah, you know, I think all of those things are on the table. We've talked about having kiosks, um, you know, anything to get food serves up there. I know that Cody and, and some of the volunteers that help out with the through the Aviation Advisory Committee and others are, are really looking hard at that. Um, we also had another question about a cannabis lounge at the airport. Sorry, it's a federal facility. You can use CBD. Yeah. <laughs> just go uh, out and smoke. Just go out and hot box in the parking lot like I do. <laughs> People might need it if they can't get to you, a Eureka. Exactly. Uh, they may need I might just get, get a little gummy stand up there for them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think if you go across the street and, and, and buy one of those properties from Steve Mosier, you could probably set up something right across from the airport. Um, I, think, I think Christine um, had her hand up. Christine Bullard? Did you have your hand up there at one point? Sorry, sorry, I, I thought you might have missed that. Hi, no, no, but I'm, I am finding all of this very interesting and I'm, I'm happy to be be here with you all. Yeah. Um, okay, hey, let's, any other questions from yeah. anybody? Um, Greg, what's the um, financial relationship between the airport and the, and the county? Is it a... Is it a profit center for the county? Does the airport under law it's not supposed to be? So, oh my gosh! So there was a sorry, that's a whole remember other the FAA clamped down on the county, and 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 part of the issue was what's called revenue diversion. So, um, this is why an authority makes complete sense. The county is not allowed to make money. The county, being anything separate from the, the Department of Aviation, from the Aviation Division or Department, um, and that's federal law. So, um, so that means, you know, you can't be a profit center. That's completely illegal. You have to charge market rates. You can't get cheap leases. Chris could talk to you a lot about this because he's been in depth and really deep in this through the Aviation Advisory Committee. Um, and basically the FAA said, if you guys don't quit basically draining the funds out of the aviation division, we're going to make you pay back the $50 million in airport improvement grants you've gotten over the last 15 years. Um, and the so, FAA was so serious. So the county went not, out and they hired might not them. fight. <laughs> they were absolutely serious. And there have been airports that have had huge fines. Uh, the county went out and hired uh, to their credit. And, and this is like Cody's first job when he got here, uh, went out and hired a consultant to do the whole study on setting fares and rates. Um, and they just adopted those, what, last month, Chris, I think? Yes, actually. Um, well, and so to go now. Yeah, the good news is there's going to be a tremendous amount of uh, potentially more revenue to the aviation division, but that's going to come at the expense of other county departments that really have been taking advantage of the, Depart of the Department of Aviation. So in that regard, the county might not be too opposed to letting go of the airport to an authority. If the county says we have to, we can't let... Uh, we can't let the go to an authority because we're afraid we're going to lose money for general operations. And the county is outright admitting that they're breaking the law. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, it's, it's plain. I mean, there's, you know, there's whole presentations on this and it's not hard. Um, okay, let's see. Um, trying to keep us on track so we don't go that much later than we already are. Um, anybody else have a question? Well, it's a great topic and wonderful, but yes. I want to respect people's time. Yes, Donna? You know, I thank you, Greg, for coming. This is so timely, obviously a little um, year or two or three too late to, <laughs> um, to speak to our business community about opportunity. But if anybody can rally, and I'm, that's not a criticism of you, please don't think that. But oh. if anybody can rally. <laughs> no, I did, uh, you know, Fly Humble, did, we did our job well. You did your job <laughs> too well. Uh, this is an a great opportunity for some um, some business opportunities. You know, one of the things I just share a story. The first time that I arrived from Sydney uh, into San Francisco, the first thing I did was uh, put on my little denim shorts and my tank top and my flip flops, and I went down to um, Fisherman's Wharf. What was the second thing I did? Bought warm clothes. So a lot of these people, you know, and I think at the time it cost me $150 and that was back in the 80s. Um, so my thoughts are these people that are coming from Phoenix and from um, um, 
uh, Burbank, uh, LA and Denver in summer, they're not going to be dressed the way that, you know, Humboldt dresses. They're going to be like the, the smuck from Australia that turned up in a tank top down on Fisherman's Wharf <laughs> and had to spend like 200 bucks on a, a cheap fleece or something, you know. And so um, is there opportunities for our business owners out there to uh, maybe have kiosks uh, just for that? You know, I think that'd be great. And who do they contact? Absolutely great. And again, um, you know, there are good ideas and then there's the length of time to get those ideas implemented. And I think if we had an air, you know, a, 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 a authority that could act on its own and, and be nimble, because you get a lot, you can get a lot done through a JPA. That's what we are. And we, we act, we're a government entity, but we don't really act like one. Um, you know, you can get this kind of stuff done and, and be quick. And um, and that's what we need to do. Um, and have a board of directors that's solely focused on the on the airport. So what's the first step to doing that? Well, um, it's a good question. I think the board of supervisors can actually set us off on that path. Now, this is not a radical concept. There is one in Crescent City. <laughs> it's a county Crescent City Airport. It's a county owned airport, but it was run by the Border Coast Regional Airport Authority. Um, we had one more question about what kind of employment opportunities are there with the expanding number of air, airlines coming in? Well, so, you you know, they will be hiring more people at SkyWest, obviously. They will probably be uh, increasing hours or hiring more people at TSA. Um, the county, unfortunately, disallocated necessary positions last year in the budget. So Cody does not really allow to hire people unless he goes back to the, the get those positions re-added by the Board of Supervisors. Um, but that's, you know, the, most airports, most of the people you see in an airport don't work for the airport, right? Even, um, so it's TSA, it's, uh, contractors and ground crew for the airlines. It's, it's contractors doing the cleaning. It's all sorts of things like that. So, so, you know, uh, airports, airports really are giant, uh, real estate, uh, uh, almost, uh, property managers and and they manage a lot of leases and a lot of licenses um, and then they obviously have to provide those levels of service for safety and all that good stuff. Is there a property management company that could get involved somehow on this call? I don't know of any. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But we do need to have a, a separate property management and, and even beyond the airport in the air service, there's a tremendous amount of land out at the airport that's developable for uh, business uh, business activities that are either aviation related or aviation compatible. And of course, they're building a new solar array up there. Um, and I was speaking to Vero Networks, who's building the big data center in um, Arcata as part of the Google fiber coming over and going over 299 coming from Singapore. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that they would uh, install facilities and, and do a bunch of networking up there at the airport, which would be another piece of infrastructure that would be uh, attractive to businesses. Okay, well, I don't see anything more. So maybe um, we want to do some prizes now. Are we ready? Thank you, Carol. Wow, that was very informative. Thank you. Our next one is uh, um, donated by Coast Central Credit Union. It is their gift basket. It doesn't get better than this, coffee, wine, and chocolates. So Chris, <laughs> who is our lucky winner of this basket? Jennifer Sherman Rupp, is she on the call? Uh, let's see here. I'm mute and shout out. Donna Wright on the call. Donna Wright's on the call. If you are, Jennifer. No. Nope. <laughs> How you, about Mark Fazzoni? Okay, Chris is going to draw again. Mark Fazzoni. Nope. nope. Is Mark here? Nope. Got to be present to win. Lisa Landry from Coast Central Credit Union. Is she on? Nope. Wow. Moving on. Just keep this hasn't happened for a while. <laughs> Teresa Conley. I oh, we know she's not here. Her. She had to, um... Juan Cervantes. She had to leave early. And remember, if you wanted, I'm sorry. Say that again, Chris. Juan Cervantes. If you want a prize, 
If you've won a prize, contact the Chamber of Commerce to pick it up. Or otherwise I'll eat it and drink it. Yes, she will, and it, she'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it thoroughly, I'm sure. Linda Wise from Recology is the winner. I, I won, I won, I won! She's the one. Yeah, all right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Our next one is donated by HSU Foundation, Humboldt State University Foundation. This is an HSU sweatshirt, size small, and of course, an HSU chocolate bar. And Chris, our winner is? Well, I think she's gonna kick herself because I know she's not on, is Jennifer Budwig from Redwood Capital Bank. You know what, she would have given it to me. <laughs> <laughs> How about Robert Morse? Is Robert Morse on? He would have given it to me too. Oh boy. Kelly Schmidt. Kelly Schmidt. Hello. Thank you. That's exciting. All right. <laughs> All right. And we'll do the very last one. And once again, remember, this is a great way to get your business name out there by donating a gift. This is donated by Claudia Johnson. And this is a basket with a copper tray, wine, and jewelry. Thank you, Claudia, for donating. She's Chris, great. our very last winner. Kim Wiley from the EDD, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here. I appreciate that. But you know what? The Employment Development Department, we are going to donate that right back to someone else. Fantastic. Thanks so much. I love, Thank I love you. <laughs> Becky Giacomini. How about Becky Giacomini? I saw her come on. I know she was Yay! on here earlier. Oh, she was right. in. Congratulations, Becky. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our winners. That was wonderful. And just as a reminder, and I know Carol already said this, but I'm going to reiterate it. Please be sure and contact the chamber office to pick up your items because the chamber office is not a storage warehouse. <laughs> we can't be trusted also, Chris. That's all I can say. It would be a form of property management. <laughs> well, okay. Jerry, I think you're up. Okay. If people would uh, raise their hand in the reactions thing, uh, we will get things kicked off here uh, as far as 30-second uh, commercials. Actually, first off, I see Lynn McKenna. So let's go to Lynn. You're, you're muted. You're muted, Lynn. You're still muted, Lynn. Unmute. There, there you go. go. Oh, you're muted again. Whoa. Did it do oh. it? Real quick. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm talking about Humboldt sponsors. We're sponsoring a blood drive in a couple of weeks, April 28th from 4 to 7 p.m. Or you can walk in earlier and just mention Humboldt sponsors. So uh, I see John on, this, on the call or the meeting here tonight too. So you know there's been lots of uh, advertising in the news or news stories about the shortage of blood. So they are always in critical need of blood. So if you can come and donate and help support our blood drive for Humboldt sponsors, we'd appreciate it. Again, it's April 28th from four to seven, and you can call me 443-9106, and I'm doing the scheduling. Next up is uh, Kelly Schmidt. Kelly, we can't hear you, you're muted. Oh. Okay. Oh, I can't see her. Bye. Just while we're waiting for Kelly to unmute, um, you know, I had quite forgotten tonight if there's anybody on here that has not joined a mixer before or is not a chamber member, please make yourself known to me and uh, I'd love to, uh, to reach out to you. So, Kelly, we'll hand it over to you. 
Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me on this today. I am the new branch manager over at US Bank as of February. And so I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and um, seeing everybody. Um, so let me know how I can help. And I look forward to joining some more mixers. All right, with that, uh, we'll go to Becky Reese. Um, travel is opening up. It's really critical that you know the requirements, where you're going, um, whether or not you can get into the country, what you need, proof of vaccination or not, proof of whether you've taken a COVID test. Also, to get back into the U.S., you have to take a COVID test, so you might want to make sure the resort hotel you're staying at has a facility to give you a COVID test. So just, you know, if you have any questions, contact me. I'll find out the information for you, no charge or whatever, because I want you to have a good vacation. All right, so I got uh, Carol Klima is next up, with the Benbo Inn. Yeah, we just want you, Benbo is open. We'd love to have you come down and visit us. We're starting to do events. We can't do the big, big ones like the 200 ones, but we would love to have you come down, bring your business down, enjoy Southern Humboldt hospitality and sunshine. Thanks. Looks like that might be the last 30 second one. So. Oh, I see a hand down there, Jerry. Where I'm looking, who'd you see? Sherry from Humboldt Sponsors. Okay, oh. go ahead, Sherry. Hi everyone, I'm gonna uh, piggyback on Lynn McKenna's uh, Humble Sponsors announcement, only this one is something brand new that we're doing, and it's a week from tomorrow, Friday the 23rd through Monday the 26th, we're doing our first ever spring furniture and home decor virtual auction through Carl Johnson's. So. Uh, everything with COVID, as everyone knows, is still very uncertain. We don't know yet if we're going to be able to have our big rummage sale in October this year. So in the meantime, we still need to raise money for the kids of Humboldt County. And this is how we're choosing to do it right now. So um, our auction Carl Johnson's site in a day or two. So stay tuned for that and um, have fun bidding and helping to support the kids of Humboldt County. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I don't see anybody. <laughs> you, Chris, if not, we'll go to Donna. Let Donna wrap things up for us here. I'm not seeing any hands raised or any questions in the chat. All right, go for it, Donna. You're muted. Donna, you're muted. There you go. A year and a bit, 10 hours a day on Zoom, and I still don't know how to use it. OMG. I just want to thank everybody here tonight for joining us. Um, if uh, I, I was just uh, the reason that I was sort of a little hesitant, I was in there looking at chats and sending messages and receiving messages. Um, if I don't re haven't replied to you in the chat tonight, please reach out to me. My cell number, I'm always on 707-407-9682. Susan or myself in the office, 442-3738. Sierra on anything marketing and promotion of your business, uh, same number, 442-3738. We're so approachable. Our team's expanding. I, uh, I implore you to maybe look at opportunities at the airport and how we can present ourselves the best way. I can't thank our speakers tonight. Uh, Darius Tretner from Real Property Management as a host, his staff, um, and for Greg Foster, both are dear friends and uh, great advocates for our community. I want to thank our Premier members. I want to pr uh, thank you for joining us tonight. If this is your first time in joining us, uh, please reach out to me. Um, I promise to talk your ear off and uh, please uh, give blood. Give blood. You know, right now I did my best. Sierra gave her best. We were epic failures, but we gave our blood. And uh, But uh, I just want uh, you all, thank you all for your commitment to our community, our business community, and keeping you, um, Eureka unique. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>